dreadful forces on earth, international communism. It is more than 100 years old. Only in the last 20 years has communism become an important factor in the thinking and planning of the American public. Today, international communism is a focal point in America's plans for the future. It is the great question mark in our happiness and economic well-being. What communism does, and America's reaction to it, today holds the fate of not only you and me, but of all mankind. The word communism, before Karl Marx began to make use of it, is an economic term, not a political one. Webster's Collegiate Dictionary communism as any system of social organization in which goods are held in common. Thus, pure communism is a mode of living employed by a group of people and principle of private ownership of property. As we dramatized in the first session of this series, our founders at Jamestown and Plymouth Colony lived for a short period in a communal or communistic mode, banded together like one big family. Everyone worked for the group, and the produce went into a common storehouse to be doled out in equal shares. We quickly found that this mode of living would not work without the forfeiting of individual freedom, private ownership, and self-reliance. The communistic experiments at Jamestown and Plymouth Colony were the pure farm, only as a magnet to draw its victims into quite a different system. But let's go back to this earthbound religion for millions. Following under the banner of Marx and later that of Lenin and Stalin, the communists have always clearly identified their myths as capitalism and Christianity. As long as capitalism and socialism exist, we cannot live in one or the other will triumph. A funeral dirge will be sung over the Soviet Republic or world capitalism. All the militant spirit that communism has whipped up since Lenin and his revolutionaries overthrew the Russian government in 1917, has been motivated and continues to be motivated by the primary aim of destroying all nations living in a capitalistic system. Communists are taught to hate the economic concept of individualism or self-reliance and the Christian concept of a spiritual God ruling over the universe. But Marx also taught that communism cannot directly replace capitalism. It must work for the establishment of socialism as the key step toward communism. Marx stated it categorically. Lenin repeated it. So did Stalin. In the main, when we establish socialism, we have already achieved the first phase of communism. The final stage of communism, as envisioned by Marx, would be a utopia with no government, no laws. The people would be banded together in associations, and the economic rule to which all would voluntarily subscribe would be, as Marx wrote, from each according to his ability, to each according to his need. Russia, after 40 years of socialism, is even farther away from this communistic goal than in 1917. In fact, the state, or government, instead of withering away, has become stronger and stronger. The citizen has less and less freedom. Let's pause and analyze our lesson to this point. Socialism, as we have noted, is the economic system under which communism intended historically to operate in its first phase. John, could you give us a definition of socialism? The ownership and operation. Communism's economic system is socialism. In communist Russia and in every other communist, the government operates the facilities for production and distribution. Communism in practice utilizes the socialistic economic system. Doing some research on this topic, can you give us the major elements? Well, communism has three key elements. They are dialectical, economic determinism, and atheism. Very good. Now let's take them one at a time. Masses. Individual man is insignificant. The individual must be subordinated to collective man. This, then, is the manner in which dialectical materialism views man. The constant theory of dialectical men, when applied to society as a destroyed through a revolution of the wage earners. And in its place with Marx, his followers learned that in most nations, especially in modern times, the workers could not be incited to revolt. So they have plotted, and in many instances achieved, the destruction of capitalism through evolution, a bit-by-bit -bit infiltration, with first the establishment of socialism, 
England, France, Italy are all good examples. The present socialism of these countries was inspired by Marx and communists have been in the vanguard of the developments. This has been the pattern throughout Europe and England. It is the pattern the communists have blueprinted for America. Thus does Marxian theory give way to Marxian realism. The Red Army and the communist fifth columns are the instruments which international communism is using to bolster the fraudulent theory of dialectical materialism. The fifth columns subvert and weaken the strong. The army takes over the weak nations. The second element in the philosophy of communism is economic determinism. Jane, can you give us a brief statement of that theory? That theory holds that the development of society is determined by material factors, particularly economic conditions. The personality of an individual, so the communists say, is created by environment, especially the economic system in which he lives. Yes, they say that heredity is a negligible factor. Almost everything is governed and molded by the economic system. No individual is responsible for his own words, thoughts, character, or actions. All this, say the, the economic environment in which man lives. They hold that capitalism brings out thirst in men, and that for the sake of the whole society, capitalism must give way to a collectivistic system in which the individual's personality can be reshaped in the communist mold. And then the last of the three basic elements of communism. When we go to the very core of communist philosophy, we find atheism. Their adoption of dialectical materialism was just another way of rejecting God. Religion, the communists say, performs two functions. First, the ruling class uses it to keep the people contented with their lot. Second, the people exploitation of capitalism. Having dispensed with God, the communists subordinate morality to the interest of their war on capitalism. Whatever the struggle requires is good, they say. Whether it be mass murder, torture, human slavery, or any of the other hideous crimes that now have been convincingly proved against the communist. In this drawing on the front and the Soviet's five-year plan represented by the V. In this communist drawing, workmen are shown dumping religion from a wheelbarrow, while another workman breaks up a church bell. We should now have a better understanding of the three basic elements in communism, dialectical materialism, economic determinism, and atheism. Before we leave this subject, let us measure the strength of international communism. On an October day in 1917, world communism could count only 40,000 dedicated adherents. These are hard-bitten revolutionaries who, under Lenin's leadership, seized control of the government of Russia. This was a generation ago. By 1940, 200 million. By 1955, they held in slavery nearly 900 million people, and that's about 40% of the population of the Earth. A special committee of the United States Senate has reported that there are five million highly trained communists working secretly as fifth columnists in the 60 nations outside the Iron Curtain. Many thousands are life, wielding great influence, affecting the thinking and the actions of loyal Americans. Writing in the American magazine, J. Edgar Hoover, director of the FBI, said, from coast to coast, Hardcore Rebs continue to use every available technique, ruse, and artifice to capture the minds and control the behavior of loyal Americans. And in a limitable number of cases, they are successful in doing so. I am hopeful that after this exposition of communism, each of you will agree that it is in the interest of Christianity, and even your self-preservation, that we know this evil force bent on world domination and dedicate ourselves to resisting its growth. Next week, we shall examine our own system, capitalism. But for now, class dismissed. The American Adventure Series is a production of the National Education Program, Searcy, Arkansas, Dr. George Edson, Director. 
Dr. Clinton L. Gaines, Jr. was our instructor. This is a continuing series based on the unique political and economic system which has made America great. Watch for the next presentation of the American Adventure.